So, I have done a lot in the name of achievements on this channel. I have ran my own petrol station, I've served perfect food to the masses, and I've even conquered the world as a tiny adorable rat. However, something that I've never done is just been a good down-to-earth honest thief. Well, today that changes. With the recent release of Thief Sim 2 and realising it's been a shocking amount of time since our last Sim game, I think it's time to steal some things, folks, all in the name of that wonderful 100%. So, grab your best ski mask and swag bag as it's time to go and steal ourselves all 50 achievements that this game has to offer. So with that, let's crack straight on. Welcome to the Achievement Grind. Now, before we officially start, I will say that I will be playing this game on Hardcore Mode for another achievement later on. Now, Hardcore Mode makes it so that if we get caught by the police, which honestly, I doubt will even happen. Oh, surely, go on. Safety line, safety line. Oh. Uh. Oh. Uh. <laughs> But when it does, we will lose all of our loot, our bailing out costs will be a hell of a lot more, and we only also get a single save slot. Something else extremely quickly as well is that the achievements for this game pop at really weird moments, namely when you travel from a neighbourhood to your base or vice versa. So even though, say, I could have picked 150 locks in the moment, the achievement doesn't pop until I leave the area. So just to explain why a lot of the achievements will pop on loading screens. Anyway, let's continue. The game begins with us getting a phone call. We're in the process of stealing from some poor person's gas when the place gets swarmed by mercenaries. Deciding that guns in our face will put a real crimp on our night, we decide to sneak out of there and escape. Basically, just a very minimal tutorial on everything that we need to do. We are then introduced to our first little location that we can go and steal from. Once there, we get a phone call from a friend saying that we are in big trouble as we have made enemies with an entire crime syndicate that now wants us dead. So we need to start paying off said debt so that we do not get murdered. Which is fine by me, I guess. The first task is to just break into an abandoned house and again, just to get used to some of the gameplay ahead of us. Once we've stolen a couple of the useless items in that house, we also then meet the local fencer, this absolute insane human who will just pay us decent cash for the loot that we happen to come across. And honestly, for the next 20 minutes, it's all pretty much introductions. We get introduced to the skill tree, the marking system, which lets you learn the homeowner's routine so that you can rob them at the best time. We also learn lockpicking, probably the most important tool to a thief's arsenal, and we're also introduced to our hideout. Also worth saying when we enter the hideout for the first time, we also also find our first easter egg picture. Now there are a couple of collectible related achievements in this game as well, so this is the first step in tackling those. Now on the next robbing session, things are going well. We're smashing through things rather nicely and completing contracts. However, upon breaking the toilet and watching it crumble and fold into a million pieces, the police are then called. To evade them, we must simply hide in a bin and wait for all of this to blow over. When they give up trying to find us after a solid four seconds of looking, we also get our first achievement for evading the police while staying on the property still unlocking escape cops. Now unfortunately when we mess up again the police are called and this time they send Robocop to take us down and much to our pain they do indeed. We are tased right in the spine and sent to prison however for this we unlock our next two achievements. Whoops for getting caught and lawbreaker for going to jail for the first time. Now when you get put in jail you have two options. You can either sleep and pay your bill or we can just try and break ourselves out anyway. So we tried breaking out. Yeah it didn't go well. We simply just didn't have the skills or the tools necessary for a breakout this early in the game, so we just pay our bail and get back to it. Now, the next mission is to break into a house and steal a drone. Now, the mission itself is fairly easy, but the drone is essential for robbing houses in the future, as when we get to higher defended areas with cameras and more guests and such, the drone is absolutely wonderful for staking out the place to make sure that we can attack it at the best time. For now, though, we just continue to rob the little houses so that we could get our level up and our skills. However, apparently during one of these heists, we found a hot item. The hot item is basically just something that the fencer wants you to find and when you find it you get triple what its price is. So by accidentally selling him one of these we also unlocked our next achievement so hot it burns. Now something else that I might not be able to show off too much right now is that this game is hard or at least it was for me. We were making progress sure however we were getting caught often and I just didn't have the gear or the brain matter for smart quiet heisting right now. Now this does get easier over time slightly but for now each mission and raid was an absolute challenge as I was still very much getting used to my bearings. And the one thing that I struggle with in stealth games is patience. I just don't have it. So getting over that was also a personal hurdle of mine. Now back at the hideout though, we were planning our missions and plotting our next step. However, we then got sidetracked by a lone bottle of beer on the shelf. I was curious and decided to just keep drinking rapidly. And after some bizarre noises and many, many, many drinks, we are in fact stopped by the game. We physically can't drink anymore. And because of that, we unlock our next achievement, I'm celebrating. I also need to mention 
something else here as well folks, sorry about the constant dumps of info, but you do need to know them for the achievements. So in the hideout is a computer, and on here are a bunch of tasks and options as well as upgrades and stuff like that. However, there is a lot for us to do for achievements here. We have to deal with contracts which make us steal a unique item from a random house. Hell Neighbour is where we have to either destroy something or plant something in somebody's house. We then have the Black Bay which lets you sell special sets of stolen items for a hell of a lot more money than the fence can give if you have the full collection. And honestly, many more different types of things that I'll explain when we get to them. So just know that we're going to have to complete a lot of these for achievements down the road. By now we also had a couple more skills and were able to pick lock stronger locks, also unlocking the ability to pickpocket and such. However, with pickpocketing the strangers on the street, I don't get the hang of it right away and instead resort to violence. With the police on the way, we decided to hop in our car and make a speedy getaway, but that does not happen. Instead, we get shot dead. However, when we go to reload the save, the car keeps going forward. It actually kills the policeman and with that, we unlock our next achievement, Police Down. Definitely a dodgy way to earn that, however, sod it, I am not complaining one bit. But at this point, I'll be honest, I wasn't really getting anywhere at all. The police were down my throat every available moment, I had no money and my robbing skills were just not up to par to say the least. However, we just pushed through and continued. Eventually, we did complete the mission and scraped a touch of self-worth back. Now, I was still very much learning the game at this point and honestly, it was a much tougher experience than I was expecting. However, something was about to happen that would shake the very foundation of the achievement grind and give me more motivation to push through than you could possibly imagine. I realised there was a cat in the game and this cat is the spitting image of my very own Clem Fandango. And yes, my cat's name is Clem Fandango. So to make Clem proud, we must become the best bastard thief that the world has ever seen. So with this new burst of energy, I wanted to get another achievement out of the way with. Since I was just attracting the police to me like a bastard mermaids to pirates, I decided to get the three star wanted level and proceed to hide in a bin until it was all over. When the helicopter left as well as the very blind oblivious officers, we unlocked our next achievement GTA. And then when we went home to celebrate, surprise surprise, we also have our next achievement as well for travelling over 15 kilometres in the game as well, unlocking Traveller. Now it's time to take this in an odd direction folks. The next mission we are given by the man on the phone is to get ourselves thrown in jail, then break out of there, also breaking out another the court thief as well. So after many times of being far too scared to even try to break out of prison, our moment is now. So we immediately rob a house, get maced and tased, and the plan works perfectly as we are now in jail. With our improved skills and knowledge, breaking us and the other thief out was absolutely easy. Now it's just time to go around the entire station, stealing keys, hoping that we can get ourselves out. Now, we did have a couple of a failed attempts, I can't lie in the slightest. However, eventually we rid the office of anything worth a damn and slide ourselves out the front door, a free man once again. With this, we also unlock the next achievement, Prison Break. And for busting out our fellow thief, we can now have the ability to call upon them to help us with a robbery, but we don't really use it too much, I can't lie. Now, when we return, the friend on the phone says that he has an idea to get the thief syndicate off our back a bit. We're going to steal documents from one of his rivals and give them to him, so as a don't kill me offering. It's easily done and hopefully our chance of survival is now gone up a bit. And also time for another miscellaneous achievement, as when we returned home for a touch of sleep, we apparently also pay our first lot of rent. And with that, also unlock the next achievement as well, pay rent. Ends. Anyway, back to the normal gameplay and standard missions. By this time, I was feeling much braver, so we started to break into houses that had greater defences and slimmer times where we could be alone. And during a robbery of House 108 where we had to break things for a mission, we also came across a rock. Now this is a very special rock, as it is a special item. No idea why, but when we pick it up, we also get our next achievement, Special Item. Now honestly, there isn't too much to say in between the achievements on this, as the game is fairly the same throughout. Just complete missions and rob people. So we're going to be going through this a little bit faster than we normally might. Now, something else that we've been grinding is specifically stealing large paintings, as with them we can put them in our own house and when we fill the last spot in our lovely home with a stolen masterpiece, we also unlock yet another achievement in Art Collector. After a couple more levels, the Lombardi boss then gives us a call, the man that we gave the briefcase to, so hopefully he won't kill us, as we apparently have stolen half a million from him. But since he really did enjoy the contents of that briefcase, we can now work with him and slowly pay off our debt. Definitely not the best news, however, it is better than being dead as a can of spam. For now, he just wants us to break some stuff at a local house, and that's the first step in hopefully convincing this gent that I'm better alive than dead. By this time as well, I had really started to make a little bit of progress and was getting a real good feeling for the game. It turns out that confidence is kind of key for this. Stealth is important of course, but you also need to be comfortable breaking into places during the day, when the residents are home and when the cops arrive. So next I decided that it was actually the perfect time for another really simple achievement.
moment. We just have to steal an item when drunk. Honestly, this is hilariously easy, as you go home, drink until you can't anymore, then simply work your way to the abandoned house, steal anything inside it, and with that, unlock dude gets sober, which honestly is a valid point. By now, however, we had unlocked our first proper heist. The criminal boss man wants something stolen from one of the fenced off neighbourhoods. And honestly, even though I was getting more confident, this was intimidating as hell. However, we must proceed. Now again, we failed a couple of times here, but I realised that I was just being far too greedy, trying to steal everything in every house, which just wasn't feasible since I wasn't the right level to attack it like that yet. So we just went after the diamond earrings that our boss so desperately needed. Doing this was much easier. We got the earrings and even took a TV with us on the way out. Heist complete and our relationship is already starting to be mended. To celebrate with this, we decided to buy the ski mask from the shop and by doing so, we also unlocked yet another achievement, who am I? However, by stealing those diamonds in such a spectacular fashion, we then unlocked our second heist as well. However, to start it, we need to buy a garage first, which costs 10 grand. So with no other option, we decided to apply to a regular nine to five job as a cleaner so that we could eventually save enough, I'm kidding, of course, we stole shit. House by house, we went taking everything we could, even completing a lot of the house's tasks and progress, which is wonderful for another achievement later on. However, about half an hour later, we finally had enough for the garage and we bought it and unlocked the next achievement, Garage Owner. With the garage now in our possession, we can tackle the next heist. Now, in this one, instead of stealing a small, tiny pair of lovely earrings, we're instead stealing a forklift. You've got to respect it, so let's crack on and get that license. Again, this was a definite jump in security, but I can't say difficulty, as if you pick your timing right, you only have to deal with two security officers. Now, don't get me wrong, it took a couple of times to get right again, but we were even confident enough to take a new drone and some other expensive gear as well. So, going for the forklift truck did didn't sound too bad to me. We hop into the driver's seat, turn the bad boy on and charge it straight out of the place and back home. When we get home, we also unlock first heist as well, even though that was the second heist. No idea, but we've unlocked it now, so let's just carry on. The crime syndicate boss then calls us back and says, not bad, but you can do better. He wants some more stuff nicked in his name and compelled, we must agree. However, for now, it's time to spruce up our house a little bit. It is a dump, so we spend a couple of thousand bringing it back to a livable level. And as you'd expect, we also unlock the next achievement for doing so, House Flipper, which is a nice reference. Now, throughout the game so far, we have also found a couple of codes to use at these lockers. Now, the only reason why I mention this is that when we get to five lockers, we will get another achievement for that, so more on this later on. For now, we just went back to the usual, stealing as much as we could, upgrading our skills, and completing all of the missions and contracts that we had. In fact, we were becoming such a good thief that after an evening of involuntary item liberation, it turns out that we had stolen over 250 items, and upon returning home, unlocked I Like Steel as well, and yes, yes I do. It is now time though for another miscellaneous achievement that I wanted out of the way. We just had to pass 30 days waiting in our car. Simple enough to do, it takes about 10 to 15 minutes of grinding, then upon returning home, we unlock the next achievement a month, which is very on the nose, is it not? Now remember earlier when I said that you could sell lists of items on Black Bay for much more than the worth selling them individually at fences? Well, it's time for the first achievement related to completing those lists, as when we steal a bracelet and flog it on there, we complete our 20th list altogether and unlock Black Bay. Now we just need to do it 30 more times with other lists for another achievement, so more on that later. Now honestly folks, I would love to say there was more that we did, but for now it's just the exact same as what we have been doing. Now honestly, even though there wasn't that much to talk about right now, I was still having so much fun with this. I was definitely getting more into the groove of the gameplay, so police visits and maced faces were getting few and far between. We carried on until we also arrived at our next achievement. Now on the computer is basically online banking where you can store your Money, and when we put over $20,000 in there, we unlock Safe Thief. Also worth mentioning that after the most recent update of this game, the devs have increased it to 50k now, so the more you know if you wanted to go for this yourself. Now it's time for something a little bit different, a new area. By doing so many quests for the lovely lot, we have unlocked a new village to rob. Now most of these new houses are absolute fortresses, however one of the less defended ones gives me a great chance to use my new skills. I'm going to rob a car. It's honestly quite touch and go when the alarm starts blaring, but with quick reflexes, we hop in and take it straight to our garage. Here we can dismantle it fully and sell the parts off for some pretty hefty profits, so not complaining at all. And this is the first of several cars that we'll need to nick for an achievement. Once dismantled, we also get straight back to the grind. In fact, we were doing so well that when we return to the car dealers, we have enough for their best, and we throw 25 grand at the owner claiming our new car. By doing so, we also unlocked Need for Speed. Now, this car is much, much faster and better for cutting around, however, we can't really store big items in it, so we won't be using it much when we want to go for the big hauls. However, 
Remember folks, it's time for some more achievements. The next we unlock was for pickpocketing people 25 times. Definitely took longer than I was expecting it to, but the people just never had stuff in their pockets for me to steal. Really rude, however, we finally did it unlocking long hand. The next was for stealing, surprisingly. We just had to grab 25 big items, so TVs, paintings, printers, that sort of thing. They're worth the risk to take them as they can be quite pricey, and upon stealing our 25th, we also unlocked carrier. But that's not all folks, over the last hour or two we have finally unlocked some means to defend ourselves. We unlocked the shock baton and the gas tank which allow you to make residents sleep so you can steal their stuff a little bit more aggressively. But the final weapon you unlock is the tranquilizer. This thing absolutely kicks ass and costs a fortune, but we finally save enough for it and by buying it the second we can we also unlock shh, time to sleep. Honestly folks, at this time a lot has been building up so we're starting to absolutely blast through some of the achievements, so let's just quickly go through them now. The next was for simply getting to level 25. This was definitely getting easier as the more skills we unlocked and the more gear that we bought, the better and faster we could rid the tenants of their possessions. So when we finally hit level 25, we unlocked knowledge. After that we also completed 25 missions through the computer. Honestly, one of the easiest aspects of the game was just having to break a window and run. So when we got to 25, we also unlocked errand boy. Next we managed to finally steal over 500 items in the game. As you can tell, we're a pretty busy thief. No idea why people are still living in the area or don't just sit at their door with a shotgun ready for me, but I'm thankful that they don't, as that has allowed us to unlock half a thousand. And literally minutes later, we also found the final code to the lockers that I mentioned earlier, and by opening our fifth in total, we unlock Courier. Now, something that I haven't mentioned yet is that throughout the game so far, we can find random vans that are parked around the map. They can be fairly rare, which is quite annoying because we need to find one in particular. And after hours and hours of searching and praying, we found one. Inside is some expensive loot as well as a letter about a kidnapping. Now honestly, couldn't give a tinker's fig about the kidnapping, but it did unlock as our next achievement as well, Suspicious Van. Definitely an achievement I was relieved to get now with the RNG of it. Now honestly folks, I would love to say that the achievement slowed down for a moment, but honestly, they sped up, and I was unlocking one about every five minutes whilst trying to master every location, get every collectible, and just complete all the computer missions. So rather quickly afterwards, we picked our 150th lock in the game and unlocked Mr. Lockpick. Then putting our more aggressive foot forward, we started shooting everybody with the Trank Gun at an unbelievable rate. Honestly, this gun was fantastic and quite overpowered as it could just put an entire house to sleep so quick that every house just felt abandoned. But for knocking 30 people out in total with our weapons, we also got Brutal Thief. Now I don't mean to sound like I'm just listing achievements here folks, but literally one minute later we also dug our fifth hole in total and by doing such a demanding and grindy task, we also unlocked the next in Treasure Hunter. For the next little while though, thankfully we just went back to normal. And with more skills and gear, as well as our horrendously overpowered gun, we started robbing everybody at an incredible level. Some of the fortresses with cameras and guards and lasers felt like nothing. Bear in mind, this is on hardcore as well, but we breezed through every single room, stripping it of anything that could fetch me a pretty penny. After a couple more hours, we also unlocked a couple more achievements. The next we got was for finding 10 hidden items in the game. Around the map are these tiny little wooden figures, they are pretty well hidden to be honest, but eventually we stumbled across them all. When we picked up the 10th and final one, we also unlocked Clever Eye. By this time as well, we had also found, stole and sold another three cars, and were making some fantastic money for it. So well in fact that for getting a total of 175 grand, we also unlocked our next achievement as well, Money Maker. However folks, by now we're storming through the campaign and getting rapidly closer to the ending. So I decided that this was the perfect time to get some cleanup done, as I wanted to end the game with the 100%. So we got to work in 100%ing every house in every area. The next achievement that we got though was for discovering many items to steal. So when we stole our 200th unique item, we unlocked Thief Discoverer. Which is just Discoverer. That doesn't even sound like a real word to me. However, that's not important. What is important is that we are so close to stealing every item and completing every mission in the first location. In fact, the last house that we needed to do was part of the main campaign anyway. So we broke in, stole some stuff, and as you'd expect, we also took pictures of the living room, completing the last mission in the last house and when we returned to our hideout we unlocked Madison Street. After this we realised that we only had one more car to steal as well. Well, I say car, it's more of a little golf buggy. We found it in the first heist, however I didn't even realise it was stealable. However, it is. So we loaded in, threw ourselves into the driver's seat and threw it over the hills and into freedom. With the last car, or well buggy stole, we also unlock car dealer. The next came minutes later as well, as we finally had completed every objective in the stolen rewards tab on the PC, which give you little buffs and 
benefits for completing long haul missions over the course of the game. It is surprisingly easy to do and quite handy, so with the last one redeemed, we also unlock stolen rewards. But folks, I'm afraid that's not all, as we have also just completed our 10th contract. Definitely one of the easier things to do, I was just too busy with other things. So by completing our 10th contract, we also unlocked Thief Contract. On top of that, we had also stolen enough to sell our 50th collection on Black Bay, another one that I was very relieved to be over, and for submitting our 50th one, we completed the achievement Black Bay Master. Honestly, folks, the progress at this point was just so quick, and it felt like everything was coming together nicely. We also had fully upgraded our Thief except for one last skill. For this, we just needed to find one more of those special items like the rock from earlier. When you find one of these special items, it rewards you with a special skill point. So with the last one finally found inside of a safe, we popped our last unlock and popped our next achievement as well. So special. Now, honestly, folks, I think it's just best I quickly list what we did so that we can get to the final mission of the game and wrap this up fully. So just like the previous area we had mastered, we then soon did the 100% of the Hillville area. And once everything had been stolen and missions completed, we unlocked Hillville Street. Now, something that I actually haven't mentioned yet in the middle of both of the areas is a ringing phone. When you answer the phone, somebody will basically give you a challenge to go to a house and steal a specific object before the time runs out, and you can't be seen. Now, the idea can seem quite daunting, but with the tranquilizer, it was pretty easy. Just shoot the tenants and run to the item. But first, we did all of the payphone challenges in Madison Street and unlocked quick work. Honestly, this only took about half an hour to do. Really was a lot easier than I was expecting. Also, in doing these challenges, we found the final photo Easter egg in the game and unlocked the final collectible achievement literally called Collect All Five Easter Eggs. Now, I know that bad achievement names can be quite the trigger for me, but sodding hell, do you folks understand why? Anyway, sod that, let's just get back to it. We carried on with the payphone missions in Hillville Street, and honestly, there was less to do in these. So in about 15 minutes, we stole the final thing that the phone man asked for. Once the telescope fits nicely into my little jean pocket, we also unlocked quick hard work. Just one more achievement now, folks, before we can finish the game and get it ticked off the list. We just have to steal 75 big items in total. Definitely one of the grindier achievements, however, we just stuck to TVs and paintings which respawned quite quickly, and were much easier to steal. Throughout the game, we had already done over half, so it took about maybe 30 minutes to an hour of pure robbery. With one final haul of paintings, we left the area and unlocked my poor trunk. Even though it's a car boot, not a trunk, but understandable. With that, folks, it's time to complete the game, and it's time to rob a bank. Now, the boss from earlier who we owe the debt to says that we need to rob a bank of all of its gold, and if we do that, we will finally be square. And honestly, sounds good to me. I really felt like I needed to have a good bank heist mission after the disappointment of Payday 3. But this is the big one, the hardest mission and the one that we would need the most patience for. Now, honestly, this was tough. Even fully upgraded and kitted out with everything there is, there was so much to do from disabling cameras to lasers to finding the bloody vault door to begin with. However, with every death and capture, we got closer to that door and more importantly, the gold inside. About two hours later, we got the run. We expertly took care of the cameras outside and indoors. We disabled the lock and the lasers around the room and headed on down. Absolutely nothing could have gone wrong. Yeah, we got caught by one of the bastard guards on the way out. However, this was a blessing in disguise, as it turns out if a guard catches you, you don't go to prison. You just lose a little bit of money and get sent home. But you also keep every single thing that you stole. So even though we got caught, he didn't take the gold out of our backpack. So we technically completed the mission with flying colours. No idea how we got that lucky, but the heist was finally done. We go home and send the gold across, finally getting into the good books. However, we do get a call from the boss saying that even though we're not going to die, he is going to shoot our other friend for helping us. No idea why, but with our friend's death close, we race over to the meat spot and a cutscene plays. In it, our friend walks slowly across the park and a man shoots him in the head. That's it game over. Our friend dies and we appear back at our house once again. With the campaign finished, we unlock Freeman for completing the campaign and Hardcore Thief for completing it on Hardcore, surprisingly. But this felt fantastic. However, folks, something odd happened. At this point, we had done every achievement in the game and it was 100% completed. However, the day before this video came out, an update was released that added one more achievement. So we had to re-download the game as I knew that I couldn't leave this one lone achievement ungotten. Now, one of the things added in the new update was a survival mode, where you have to also eat, drink and sleep, as well as pay much more rent. The achievement just has us survive a week. Honestly folks, with the money that we had, we just ate, drank and bought sleeping pills to go through the entire week within 10 minutes. It wasn't that intimidating at all. So on the final day, we woke up, left the area and unlocked the actual final achievement now, survivalist. Now, thankfully and hopefully with no more achievements added, it's finally done and for now, the grind is over. 
Oh, Thief Sim 2. Now, honestly, the first five hours did make me quite nervous that this game was going to be a lot harder than I was expecting it to. But once you get into the swing of things, it was a lovely game to go through. Hell, even hardcore felt right, and I honestly would suggest just going through this game on hardcore to yourselves, should you pick this up, which I would recommend. But this was a great return to Sim games, and I'm so glad that I picked this one up. I thought the ending was shite, I can't lie, but that's one of the only things that I didn't like about the game, and I am looking forward to seeing what comes next. Very much so, actually. However, with that, let's just get straight to the stats. For Thief Simulator 2, it took us just over 20 hours to grind all 50 achievements that this game has to offer. My review of the game is going to be a pretty well-deserved 8 out of 10. With a touch more content, a better ending, and maybe a couple of wacky emissions, this game could have honestly been very close to a 9 or a 10. I loved this game and would recommend it to anybody wanting to give it a chance. For difficulty of the achievements, I am going to be giving it a 3. There is a bit to do with the collectibles and the 100%ing in the areas, however, nothing that should give you too much grief. Once your character is a high enough level, you'll breeze through it. Just remember the game starts hard and gets much easier throughout, so I do think a 3 is fair. For the hardest achievement, however, I'm going to be giving it to my poor trunk, as 75 big items did take a lot longer to grind than I thought it would, but as long as you stay on top of it, you should be totally fine. But folks, that's it. Thank you all so much for watching, and if you want to see more simulation games, don't forget to like and subscribe, as I love playing them, so if this gets 4,000 likes, I will make sure that another sim game comes soon. Don't forget to also swing by my Twitch as well, where we go for the Achievement Grinds Live, it would be great to have you, the link is in the description below. And of course, I also need to thank my amazing Patreons as well. Thank you all so much for the additional support, I really, really do appreciate it. But folks, that's it from me today, thank you all so much again for watching, have yourselves a great week and I shall speak to you all very soon. Take care everybody, bye bye for now.